So we are going to talk about length contraction, time dilation, and the relativity of simultaneity, and give some explanations about why we should expect those kinds of things to happen. It often seems strange to see things like time moving slower in a moving reference frame from the perspective of classical physics. But once we take the perspective of special relativity, a lot of it becomes very natural. In order to do that, I'm going to start with the idea of the Lorentz transformation. You can check the video in the description where we derive using a few basic physical assumptions that if we have some inertial reference frame S prime, which moves with a velocity V in the reference frame S, then if we want to transform from the coordinates of S to S prime, we can do that using this matrix A, which is gamma times one minus beta minus beta one. And in this case, beta is defined to be equal to V over C. So if we have some coordinates x, c, t that exist in the reference frame s, then if we multiply gamma 1 minus beta minus beta 1 onto this matrix, that gives us the coordinates in the reference frame s prime. Now this matrix gives us a way to transform coordinates in s to coordinates in s prime. If we want to go the reverse direction, we just have to remember that in S prime, S is moving with velocity minus V. So we can do the exact same transformation and say X C T equals gamma times. Now that the velocity is opposite, instead of minus beta, we're going to have plus beta. So I have one beta beta one times X prime C T prime. And we can use these two transformations to shift between the coordinate systems however we want. We're going to start by looking at length contraction, which says that if an object is moving in some reference frame S, it will appear to be shorter than in a reference frame where the object is stationary. So let's suppose we have an object that's stationary in S prime and has a length L. So if we look at a space time diagram in S prime, we're going to have a point at the origin and a point at X prime equals L. We want to take this object and transform it into reference frame S. Now, first of all, we know that one of the points is going to be at the origin. This is the beginning of the object, the back end of the object at X prime equals zero. And if we apply any matrix to the zero vector, we're going to get zero back. So we know that the back end of the object is going to be observed at zero, zero in S. Now we want to think about how the front end is observed in S. But remember, this point right here has a time coordinate of zero. So whatever coordinate we choose in S prime, we're going to need to choose one such that when we transform it, we get the same time. Because of course, any observer is only going to see one specific time slice. So we need the front and the back to be observed at the same time in order for the length to make sense. In order to do that, I'm going to propose that we look at ct prime equals negative beta l. Now, because the object is stationary, we can pick any time we want, since the x value is going to stay the same. It's not moving. So x prime at the front end of the object is still going to be l regardless of the time. Now we want to transform back into the coordinates of s. So let's see what happens if we do that gamma times 1, beta, beta 1, and then we multiply by our primed coordinates, that's going to be L and negative beta L. So what do we get in this case? Well, if we multiply this matrix, we're going to get a gamma out front, and then we have L minus beta squared L. So that's going to be 1 minus beta squared L. And then here, beta L minus beta L, that's going to be a 0. And so this is why I chose ct prime equals negative beta l. This is actually the time that gets us back to zero in the reference frame s. Now what is gamma times one minus beta squared? Well notice gamma is one over the square root of one minus beta squared. And so if we multiply these two, we'll actually get the square root on top, which is the same thing as one over gamma. So the coordinate that we get here we can write gamma times 1 minus beta squared L as just 1 over gamma times L. 
Now we know 1 minus beta squared, that's less than 1. So the denominator is less than 1, which means gamma is bigger than 1. And that means 1 over gamma is less than 1. So 1 over gamma times L, this is less than L. And that's what we said earlier, the object is shorter in the reference frame where it's moving. So the result here for length contraction is that if you have an object that's moving at velocity v in some reference frame s, the length observed for that object is 1 over gamma times the length when it's stationary. So that's what we call length contraction. One of the interesting things we notice here is that at the same time that we talk about length contraction, we have to talk about the relativity of simultaneity. Now the relativity of simultaneity means that two events that are at the same time in one reference frame might not be at the same time in another reference frame. So in this case, we see that the two events, the back of the object here, 0, 0 in S, and then this point, 1 over gamma L, 0, in S, these are simultaneous. They have the same time coordinate. But if we look at the corresponding events in S prime, the exact same events, but in the coordinates of S prime, 0, 0 is still the same, but the time coordinate of the other event is negative beta L, not 0. These two events were simultaneous in S. They happened at the same time. In S prime, they did not happen at the same time. The front end event happened earlier than the back end event. So one question you might ask is, why can't we just use ct prime equals zero instead? Transform that back to s. That'll give us how long the object is, right? Well, let's see what happens if we do that. Gamma times one beta beta one times l zero. This is the other point on the object here, where in s prime we would observe these two happen at the same time. Let's see what we get. Again, we're gonna have a gamma out in the front Let's see what we have here. First L on the top, and then down here, beta L plus zero. So notice, time is not zero anymore. So this event actually happens later in S, whereas in S prime, they both happen at the same time. In either case, we see events simultaneous in one frame are not simultaneous in the other frame. Now, if you're in a special relativity class, you might hear the phrase leading clocks lag. So while we're here, I'd like to explain what that is referring to. Let's suppose we're looking at a space-time diagram in S, reference frame S. So we have X and CT here, and we have one person who's positioned at X equals zero, and we have another person who's positioned at X equals one over gamma times L. And at the same time as these two people are standing here, we have two people who are running forward at a speed of plus v. So we have a person here at x equals 0 and at x equals 1 over gamma l in the reference frame s. So these two people are running forward and they're also holding clocks. Now these two people here, they have their clocks synchronized in the reference frame S prime, in the reference frame where they are not moving. So according to them, their two clocks read the same values. Now let's suppose that at the time that each person reaches x equals zero and x equals one over gamma L, the person stops them and asks, what time is it? Or in other words, what time does their clock read? What we saw here is that at zero, zero in S, this person would say, my time reads ct prime equals zero. But over here at one over gamma l zero, at the same time as zero zero in s, over here at x equals one over gamma l, the person in s prime says, my time reads negative beta l. So if we look at these two clocks, their times do not read the same thing. And in fact, the person who's farther ahead, farther in the direction of motion, has a time that's negative. In other words, it's earlier than the person over here. That's why we say leading clocks lag. The farther you move in the direction of motion, 
the more it looks like your time is becoming negative to two people who ask at the same time in S. The last thing we're going to talk about is time dilation. You might hear this in a special relativity class being phrased as moving clocks tick slower. So if a person is stationary in S prime, so they're moving at a velocity V in reference frame S, then their clock will be observed to move slower than a clock that's stationary in S. It will look as if time is passing slower for them than for a stationary observer in S. So let's see exactly what that looks like with a space-time diagram. Say we're looking in S prime, so we have our coordinates X prime and CT prime, and we have someone who is stationary in S prime. So their world line is going to just be a vertical line. They're going to have X prime equals zero the entire time. And so two points here, one is going to be the origin, and the other point we're going to pick up here, this is at zero T naught, so this is, or C T naught. So this is just some time later, but they haven't moved at all in S prime. Of course, they have moved in S, because S prime is moving relative to S. Like we said before, zero, zero is going to get transformed to zero, zero. But let's see what happens to this other vector. Our goal here is to transform from S prime back to S, so we'll use this matrix. Gamma times one, beta, beta one, and then x value is 0, and then c, t, naught. What do we get as our result? Gamma out front, let's see, 0, beta, c, t, naught. And then for the second part, 0, c, t, naught. So what is this telling us? First of all, remember that beta is defined to equal v over c. So what this part is really saying here, beta, c, t, naught, that's the same thing as v times t naught. So really, this is the velocity that s prime travels relative to s times how long it was traveling. So this first component is just describing the fact that an object that's stationary in s prime is moving with a velocity v in s. So as time passes in s prime, it's going to be moving forward in s. But let's take a look at this time coordinate, because really, this is not c t naught. If we put the gamma on the inside of the vector, this is gamma c t naught. So the amount of time that we observe to pass in s is scaled up by a factor of gamma. Remember that gamma is always bigger than 1. So for a specific amount of time that passes in s prime, a person in s, a stationary observer, that's looking at the moving object, they would observe that more time passes. So for example, someone on S prime might say, 30 minutes have passed, and then they would talk to someone in S, and the person in S would say, wait, you say 30 minutes have passed? No, an hour has passed. So more time has passed for the stationary observer than for the thing that's moving, and that's what we call time dilation.